Proverbs chapter number 27. Proverbs chapter number 27 is where we're going to be. And let me say that I was going to um, start a new series on the book of Galatians today. Uh, but really, with, with all that happened this week, uh, God just laid some, some different truths on my mind that I felt like I should share today. And so uh, we'll be starting a new series next week. And instead, today, this morning, we're just going to be focusing on uh, what I call or entitled Lessons for Life this morning. As Brother John was saying, I, uh, we, we, we had that funeral on, uh, on Thursday and uh, Friday, and it was on Friday there at the gravesite just shortly after... Um, Brother Robert Arellano, who's four years younger than his brother Antonio, who we were burying, um, just, I don't know, he finished preaching his message, and, and about 15 minutes afterwards, in fact, uh, I was sharing with someone earlier that I was the second to last person he, he spoke with. I, I, I saw his son, gave him a hug, and told him, hey, we really loved your uncle, and, and I said, where's your dad, by the way? I want to, you know, say, say bye to him, and... and um, let him know I appreciate him and, and love him before we, uh, before we go back. And uh, he was sitting under a tree, and um, of course it was, it was a little bit warm that day, and um, he was kind of just drinking uh, a Coke to, to kind of get his sugar levels back up and things like that. And I uh, went over, spoke with him uh, for probably two or three minutes, just letting him know that we loved him as a church, that uh, we were uh, praying for their family, uh, sharing some words of uh, how I appreciated his brother, who is uh, Brother Antonio. And, um, and so the last thing I just remember sharing with him was said, Brother, I, I love you. And, and I said, next time you're up in the valley, I want you to stay with me and Rochelle in our home and, and make sure that you, you come by. Don't ever go by the valley without uh, stopping by with us. And he said, no, we will do that. And uh, his wife was sitting there next to him. I gave her a hug and said, hey, I love you. And uh, she said, are you going back right now? I said, yeah, we're going to go back. And she said, well, just be safe on the road. I said, yes, ma'am, we will. Um, and I probably took 30 seconds. I stepped away. Brother Pastor Mario was another pastor friend, was walking to go and say hi to him as well. I walked by, and I probably, uh, 20 steps after that, I just heard someone yell, doctor, we need a doctor. And I turned around, and uh, there was Brother Robert on his back and had just had a heart attack, and just like that. He was in the, the presence of, of his Lord and uh, reunited with his brother, uh, for sure. Uh, something that happened so quick, and uh, uh, on the way back up, I was, I was thinking, I don't know how to process this. I don't know if you've ever been like that in a situation in life, but I was still mourning his brother, and now this happened. Both of them were our missionaries uh, for uh, well over 20 years here at our, at our church, and um, um, I don't, I don't even know what words to express, just the, the level of when that happens. You, and if you've lost someone close, you know, it's just, it, you kind of, I think the first state of mind is denial. Like, no, he's, maybe he just passed out. Maybe, um, his cousin is a doctor and he was there and started doing CPR right away. And, and, uh, shortly after took him to the hospital and, and then they gave us the news and, uh, as I thought about all of that that was happening, um, really on the way back from Monterey, it's about a two and a half hour drive, and, and then all day yesterday, I was just kind of thinking um, wh what to think of this, and, and remembering their memory, their legacy, and, uh, and I thought, you know, I, I think this is what I want to share in, in church, and just kind of felt like the Lord was, was laying this on, on my heart. So uh, may not be the deepest message, it's not going to be probably truths that you've never heard or lessons that you've never had, but there are lessons that I was reminded of through uh, Antonio and Robert, uh, my two friends. They were way older than me, so they were not just friends, they were mentors. Uh, March 29th of 2022, uh, Brother Antonio went with the Lord, um, had, as I've explained, four heart attacks that, that day, and God miraculously woke him up. He was able to say bye to his children, say bye to his grandchildren, and, uh, and later that week, um, didn't wake up anymore. Um, and, and then with what happened on Friday with Brother Robert, 
uh, which was on April 22nd, lost another friend. Both of these men were people who had an influence on my life, had an impact in my life in a, in a very positive way. Um, their faithfulness was seen and heard by the decisions that they took in their lives, by just their daily life, the way they lived. It was, it was something that uh, I didn't talk to them every day, didn't have to talk to them every day. Um, anytime they were coming stateside, they would stop by our church. And if it was on a Sunday, they would be in our services. If it was on a Wednesday, they would be on our services. And um, men that um, the opportunities I had to talk with them were always, always uh, very encouraging and um, men that, that I appreciated greatly. Uh, they were used of God to, between both of them, they planted a total of um, at least nine churches there in Monterey. Um, and I just, at their funeral, uh, they had more than 800 people show up. That's the kind of people they were. Uh, people appreciated them. People loved them. And uh, as, I, as I thought about what I learned from them, uh, the lessons that I, that I learned, I, I thought, you know what, that's, that's, that's what I want to share today. And, and, and I think maybe God can use that to encourage you this morning, but also maybe to challenge you uh, and challenge me uh, to be that type of friend for others and uh, be that type of mentor and try to have that impact in others. Proverbs chapter 27 and verse number 9 it says, ointment and perfume rejoice the heart. So doth the sweetness of a man's friend by hearty counsel. And when I, when I think about that verse, that, that they came to my mind. Uh, they were people that were, um, that, that brought joy and, and I could rejoice because they always had an encouraging thing to say and a helpful thing to say. And so uh, this morning, I just want to give you four quick lessons for life that they taught me as I spoke with them, spent time with them, and, and what I observed in their life. Uh, Antonio, who was only 62 years of age, and his brother Robert that died there at the cemetery was only 58. Very young, very young. Um, one of the pastors we were traveling with, um, he's, he, he told me afterwards, he said, you know, uh, Jeremy, it, it just makes me think how lucky I am to get to 70. Lucky. He said, uh, you know, they, they were in better shape than I am. Um, they were a lot more active than I am. And, uh, and yet, God saw it fit to take them home, and I'm still here. And he said, I've been very, very grateful for that. And uh, as I reflected on that, I thought about the first lesson that I, I learned from my friends, and it was this. Number one, that life is short, so make it count. I've heard this truth many times in life. In fact, every time that I speak with someone who's older than me, they always share how fast time goes. Um, I've, I've talked a lot to, to Brother Chevy, and he's, I don't want to say his age, because uh, we'll just say he's, he's made it to 25, like me, two to three times, right? So um, it's, 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 he's still young at heart. But he always tells me, man, it goes by so fast. He, he tells me I've got a five-month-old daughter. He said, man, enjoy that time. Uh, because you think that stage lasts forever, and, and in reality, it goes by so quick. Um, and, um, and I think it's a, it's, a, it's a truth that most of us know. We, we know it up here. Um, and, and we can think about how life goes so quick. But what I think the, 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 the truth to draw out of life being so quick and going by so quick or, or so fast, it's is making it count. Like, it doesn't matter if God only gives you 30 years. I, I had a, I consider her a sister-in-law, my cousin's wife, passed away at 29, uh, six years ago. These two friends of mine, 58 and 62, others are well past that. Life is short. Even if you live to be 95, it still feels short. But making it count. What does it mean to live 29 years? Why did God only give 29 years to some and others 58 and others 75 and others 94? Why? 
I believe it's because he's given the years that we have so that in those years, no matter how short or how long we might look at it, all of it's relatively short, making it count somehow. How do we make it count? How do we make our lives mean something? As I thought about that, this truth kind of stood out to me. Life is short, so make it count. How do I make it count? Focus on the eternal, not the temporal. We have a tendency as people to always look at the here and now. We think about what's happening, the technology that comes out, and we think this is as good as it gets. Um, I'm a child of the 80s. I was born in 83. Um, so it was in the 80s and 90s that a tracks stopped being a thing, right? Cassettes came in. By the time that I was really in middle school, cassettes were already making their way out. If you're a teenager today and you don't know what a cassette is, that just I'm telling you, that's why. They're irrelevant. I don't even think they manufacture them anymore. CDs came in. If you're a teenager, you might not even know what a CD is. It kind of looks like a DVD, but it's for music, only for music. And you think, man, that's going to last forever. Till about, you know, 2000 and what, three or four, this little thing called an iPod comes out, right? It's got all these songs that you can put on it, and now iPods and iPads. And we, we tend to think that whatever we are in the present matters and is the greatest thing ever. And so we have a tendency as humans just kind of to look at what's happening now and think that's, that's as good as it gets. But life's short. And if you're going to make it count for something, you can't look at the here and now. You've got to look at the future. You've got to look and focus on that which is eternal, not that which is temporal. Let me tell you what happens when you just look at the here and now. You miss a lot. One of the things that you miss is you miss the importance of investing. The, the only way that you can impact the future right, is investing now in the future. Um, we see this all the time. Uh, we're seeing it more and more because we are a society and a country that is turned into immediate gratification, right? Um, you get a $3,000 limit credit card, you spend $4,000. I mean, that's just how we live in our society. Right? We want now. We want things here and now. But, and, and, and there are many people facing this. They get to retirement age or an age where they can't work like they used to. And guess what? If you didn't save anything, it gets really tough. The only way that they can really impact their life now is from the decisions that they made yesterday. My, my dad used to tell me this all the time growing up. He said, Jeremy, you're living today the decisions you made yesterday. And you're going to live tomorrow the decisions that you make today. Focus on the eternal, not the temporal. Here and now comes and goes. Life is short. You want to make it count? Focus on the eternal. If not, you miss the importance of investing. You'll miss the importance of significance. You know, living for today leads us to make decisions that are insignificant. It really does. Uh, you, you can spend your money on insignificant things. You can use your 24 hours that you have in a day doing insignificant things, activities. Anytime your focus is on the here and now, we miss it. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, Jesus kind of speaking on this topic said, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, what ye shall drink, and yet for your body, what you shall put on, all of that is the here and now and the immediate. He said, is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? In other words, you're going to make life count. You can't just focus on, hey, what am I wearing right now? What's in style now? What am I eating now? No, no, it's got to be bigger than that. Don't focus on the temporal. Focus on the eternal. And the other thought on that is this, invest in people, not in possessions. When I think of these two men, my friends, Brother Robert on Friday, literally 30 minutes before he was in the presence of God, was preaching a message and sharing the gospel. 
just sharing what God had taught him in his life from the Bible. He died in the service of God. Brother Arellano, before he had that heart attack, he was in Dallas. He lives in Monterey. You know what he was in Dallas doing? He wasn't vacationing. He wasn't just kind of living it up. He's preaching a conference, a missions conference. He preached on Friday and had a heart attack on Saturday. You say, well, why do you share that? Because they were focused on the eternal, not the temporal. And I love the fact that they were investing in people and not possessions. You know, possessions come and go. (laughs) There are people in this life that all they do in the 30 years of life or the 58 years of life is just try to accumulate things. And I can tell you, I've fallen victim to that. I like things. Ask my wife. I love presents. Any present. I don't even care. I just love gifts. I, I see that in my, in my second son, Jordan. Man, me and him, we are so alike. Right? I mean, I don't walk into Walmart without walking out with something. Right? I tell my wife, like, I, didn't, I didn't come to waste 30 minutes of my time. All right? Even if it's a pack of gum, I'm buying something. I just love things. Right? I, I, I love that, that Jordan, like, he, he always, even, even every Sunday, you'll, you'll notice it now, but he always has something in his hand, like a little box with little Legos, and, and he loves a little, like, if there's a little briefcase, he's like, Dad, here's my briefcase. <laughs> He'll take it with him. I'm like, okay. We just love accumulating things. But because life is short, listen, invest in people. Possessions come and go. Things come and go. It's kind of like the, the sticker. Uh, you Maybe you have seen it, the, the bumper sticker that says, he who dies with the most toys still dies. We're not taking it with us. Accumulating things is nice. It can bring, I don't know, depends who you're talking to. If it's my kids, it gives them at least an hour of joy, right? Before they're like, okay, this toy, we need another one. It's not as as fun as it was an hour ago when we bought it. And we laugh at kids for that, but you know the reality is we're kind of like that, right? Like, oh man, we really need a new car. Why, did yours break down? No, 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 but you know, it's been three years, come on now. It's been six months, we need the next one. By the way, I don't, I'm not preaching against having cars. Have a nice car. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is, as we get stuff, let's not make our life about stuff. Invest in people. You know, investing in people is just so much more re- rewarding. I remember my dad telling me, you know, Jeremy, people is the only thing you're taking to heaven. That's it. Everything else stays here. You can share the gospel with your kids and make sure they're going with you. You can share it with your neighbor and make sure he's going with you. You can share it with coworkers and make sure that they're going with you. It's the only thing that's making it out of this life. People. Invest in people, not in possessions. It's so much more rewarding. Possessions only bring temporary relief and joy. People can give lasting relief and joy. Jesus said in Luke 19, 10, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And Jesus said, I came for people, not for things. I left things for people. Invest in people. Life is short. Make it count. A second lesson I learned was serving God is worth it all. Brother Antonio used to say that all the time. In fact, on the little bulletin that they printed out for him on his funeral, it said, Vale la pena servir a Dios. It is worth it all, serving God. It's worth it. It's not original to him. It wasn't original to Robert, his brother. But it does describe them. And it ought to describe us. Showing that serving God is worth it all requires faith in what God says. If you really, if you say, well, how do you know that it's worth it all? Faith. I don't know how it all ends. I've never experienced death. And if you say, are you scared of death? Absolutely. I think we're all a little bit frightened. Nobody wants to die unless you're being tortured or something. It's not something we desire, but we know it's coming. 
And the way we face that greatest fear that man has is by faith. In fact, some people say it's faith over fear to be victorious in life. Faith over fear. Serving God is worth it all, but it requires faith in what he says. In fact, Hebrews 6.11 says, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Serving God, you can see the impossible happen. You can see a drug addict leave drugs. You can see an alcoholic stop drinking. You say, oh, doesn't the world do that too, Pastor? I mean, I've seen people in AA do that. Yeah, you're right. But they don't invest in the eternal just for that. But God does. Not all of them save their marriage, but God can. God specializes in the impossible. And when you serve him with your life, you get to witness that kind of stuff. You see a life changed and a purpose changed. I don't mean to be always using Brother Chevy as an example here, but I'm going to do it again. His kids are about my age, so that's why I'm using him right now. But they've told me, they said, Jeremy, I never thought I'd see my dad do what he's doing now. Never. He ran our work day yesterday. His son told me, Jeremy, I never thought I'd see him even push a lawnmower. <laughs> he doesn't. Growing up, never saw that. But he got saved. Things changed for him. God worked in his life. And now on a work day, he's leading the men in putting mulch down and going and getting, getting his hands dirty, doing all of that. You serve God, you see the impossible. It requires faith, though. But not only does it require faith, it, re it requires commitment. You can't serve two masters. You can't be divided in your passion and in your love for things. When, when we're divided, it results in inconsistency in our life at best. It produces hate at worst. Serving God is worth it all. It will require faith from us so we can see it and live it and experience it, but it will also require commitment. Commitment that sees through the darkness. Commitment that will build our faith. A commitment that opens our understanding and fills our hearts. Commitment does that. When you're committed in serving God, you see why it's worth it all. Jesus sharing this truth in Matthew 13 said to his disciples again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Commitment. To say, it'll cost me everything. Yes, it'll cost you everything. Jesus said, if you're going to follow me, deny yourself, take up the cross and follow me. It's going to cost you everything, but it's worth it. It requires commitment. My all, yes. Blood, sweat, and tears, yes. But you'll find that it's worth it. It's worth it. Just a lesson that I saw in their life. Let me give you a third one real quick. The spotlight isn't everything in life. The spotlight isn't everything in life. I saw this in their life. In a world full of influencers and YouTubers, it's good to remember this truth. I mean, there's literally millions of people that that's what they want in life is the spotlight. Fame. People know my name. Get as many likes as I can or any, as many views as I can, and that's what it is for them. But I 
I've learned that the spotlight isn't everything in life. You know, our worth isn't determined by how many likes we receive on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or whatever the latest platform, social platform is. It's not revealed there. Our significance is not measured there. If you're trying to get your significance in life by getting the spotlight or your views, I think you'll find that you're, sorely, you're going to be sorely disappointed. Sorely. Oh, but the money's going to be good. Money doesn't bring joy. And anyone that has it will tell you that. I don't have it and I can tell you that. But I've known those that do. And they've told it to me. I have found that most of the significant things that we do, people probably won't notice it. But I can tell you this, God will. And that's what really significance comes down to, God. The significance of your life is going to be measured by how much is God in your life. And how much does God lead you in your life? And how much does God control of your life? That's what's going to give you significance. When that's missing, life can be very empty. Very empty. So with this, I would just say, look for God's approval above all else. The spotlight has everything to do with those around us. The spotlight has everything to do with wanting people to notice us and praise us. We want others to admire our actions and our intelligence. We, we desire the, the words of greatness from others to describe our accomplishments. But I often ask myself, why? Why is that so important? Why is millions of people on Facebook that we'll never meet, why is their comments so important to us? Listen, I, you've probably read the stories. I know I have. Teenagers at 15 years old taking their life, suicide because of some comment by somebody on their page. Why? Because they thought that the spotlight was everything. They thought that was important in life. Can I tell you that God's approval should be all that you need in your life? It matters more. It gives you more significance than anything. When you look for God's approval in your life, it can bring satisfaction and peace, even in the midst of turmoil. It can give you order in your life in a world of chaos, in a world of confusion. It gives you special insight and It gives you, I don't even know how to describe it. It just gives you a whole different way of thinking and viewing things. So look for God's approval above all else. Psalm 118.8 says, It is better to trust in the Lord than in, to put confidence in man. They say that there's 1,188 verses in the Bible. The very center of the Bible, they said, is Psalm 118, verse 8. <laughs> and in the center of this book, God says, it's better to put your approval and find your approval in me than in others. Because the spotlight isn't everything. It's just not. And then determine to do what is significant. Determine to do what is significant in your life. There are going to be a lot of people that don't appreciate or admire what you do for God. <laughs> Others won't even notice it. Others don't even know how it impacts our world. Can I tell you something? Do it anyways. Do it anyways. Yeah, yeah, but, but no one's going to write about me. It's okay. Do it anyways. Determine to do what is significant because it matters. Not because it's popular or convenient or safe, or fun. Just do it because it's significant. 
Listen, I, I checked Fox News yesterday, not a mention, not even one mention of Antonio or Robert Arellano. Not one mention of nine churches in Monterey because of their life's work. Not one mention of the sacrifice that they gave throughout their life, their faith in God, their faithfulness to God. Not one article, not one word. I found articles about Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. It gives a rip about them. Apparently enough people because they're writing it there. So insignificant sometimes what grabs our attention. Life's short. Make it count. Serving God is worth it all. And let me tell you, the spotlight isn't everything. If there's something I learned from my two friends, the spotlight isn't everything. They did what they did in their life because it's significant. Significance isn't significance because of people that recognize it. Things are significant because God says it's significant. Let me give you the last one because time's run away. Be thankful for all you receive. If there's a world that describes or a word that describes this world, just one word, it'd be unthankful. <laughs> this world can be careless and cruel and condemning. The selfishness of this world is seen in almost every area of our life. In every culture on this planet, you'll see it. You'll find it. And that's what makes thankfulness so amazing because it's, it's so uncommon. It's a characteristic of God. How do we do that? One of the things I, I remember most about both these men, they always wanted to do that, always. Uh, after they had been here on a weekend, they would text me on Monday, hey, Pastor, it's great to be in your church. In those days, I wasn't the senior pastor, so it was just, hey, brother, it's good, to, it's good to be in your church. Enjoyed the service. I was so thankful for the encouragement that we were to them. They were always so thankful what they received and being thankful. I want to give you two quick thoughts on that. Number one, show thankfulness by saying it. Our words mean things, don't they? When, when, when you hear somebody say, you're dumb, it means something. We don't go, ah, those are just words. <laughs> no, people get in fights for stuff, just for words. Because words mean things. When, when, when someone just says something like, you're bothering me, it can be very depressing. Oh, because words mean things. You know, when it comes to thankfulness, say it. Say thank you. Tell your mom or your dad, thank you. Any new parent knows we wouldn't have made it a week without mom or dad. Not even a week. I don't think we'd make it a day and a half. Probably wouldn't make it a few hours. If I think about it. Mom just had you and left you in the hospital and nobody else went to attend you. Baby doesn't last forever. Can't feed himself. Can't get up and walk. It's nice to just say thank you. Mom didn't have to do that. Dad didn't have to do that. Your siblings didn't have to do what they do. Your friends don't have to do what they do. It's nice to just say thank you. Someone said unthankfulness is the mother of selfishness and pride. We should never get tired of saying thank you. And then show thankfulness serving others. Our thankfulness is reflected in our service to others. When a person has a heart of thankfulness, they don't worry about how they're coming off in serving others. There's, <laughs> there's a story about that that we'll look at in John chapter 12. But someone that is just thankful in serving, their thoughts are not even on themselves at all. They, they, they're not wondering, like, am I making a fool out of myself by... By serving them like this and being thankful like this, they don't. They don't do. That's the last thing on your mind when you're doing that. <laughs> you just want to display appreciation and love 
and gratefulness and so you serve. And in John chapter 12, there's a, there's a woman by the name of Mary who wanted to say thank you to Jesus. And she was so grateful and she began to wipe her. I, the Bible didn't say that she, she expressed too many words. All it was is that she had a bottle of ointment, some perfume that was very costly. And she broke it and poured it on Jesus' feet. And she began to dry his feet with her hair and with her tears. And you know what people did? The people around her criticized her, condemned her. What are you doing? Why did you do that? She's not focused on them. She wanted God's approval because the spotlight ain't everything. And she's just there drying his tears. It'd be drying his feet with her tears. Using her hair. The ointment made the whole house smell good. Everybody was blessed by her service there. Thankfulness has that effect on people and everyone around you. This morning, I know they're not the deepest of truths. They're just lessons that I learned from my friends. Life is short. Make it count. Serving God is worth it all. Spotlight is in everything in life. I'm telling you, when it comes to this last truth, be thankful. Be thankful. A life's a vapor. Saying thank you goes a long way. Serving others out of thankfulness. You never know when it's your last time to be able to do that. Here were life-changing truths for me. Just simply wanted to pass them on and remind all of us. Because they can be life-changing lessons for you. I hope we can apply them and do them in our life. Let's pray. Father, I, I thank you for friends in our life that have a positive impact. Thank you for friends that encourage us. That as an ointment rejoiceth their, the heart because of hearty counsel. I, I, I thank you today for Brother Antonio and Robert Arellano. The lessons that their life taught me. And I, I ask, Lord, that those lessons wouldn't be something that would just only help me, but help all of us here today. The truth of your word is undeniable, indescribable, and unbelievable. I, I pray that those truths would be something we can apply in our life and live out. I ask this in Jesus' name, amen. amen. I'm going to ask if you would to stand this morning. And as we sing our final song, the song called I Will Wait For You, I, I do want to, um, I do want to take a moment and uh, I'm going to ask Brother Jose to get the uh, offering plates and maybe someone can help him uh, this morning. As we, as we take up an offering for Brother Robert Arellano, uh, a couple weeks ago, we took up an offering for Brother Antonio as, um, as we were trying to be a help and a blessing. By the way, we, we were able to raise $2,500 that we gave to the family. And I know it's only been two weeks since that offering, but we are a church that is extraordinarily generous because we have an extraordinarily generous God. And um, I've just felt like we ought to be extraordinarily generous one more time with Brother Robert's uh, family. And so this morning, we're going to, as we're singing this last song, going to take up an offering. Uh, I know that we don't all carry cash, and, and uh, if, if you don't, this evening uh, on, our, um, on our webpage, we'll have a place where you can use your card to pay. Uh, we didn't have a, uh, an opportunity to, to upload that this morning, but uh, we're going to do that this afternoon. And so if you want to pay this evening and just be a help to the family, uh, I want to encourage you to do that. Um, uh, 
it was a very unexpected thing to happen. Um, but the, the good thing is, is that in the unexpected moments of life, we can do what God expects of us. That's to be a blessing and a help. And that's what I want to do this morning. And as a church, I think we can all pitch in and show them that we love them, that as our missionaries, we didn't just pray for them, but we actually practically did something for them as well. And uh, we want to do both. So uh, let's pray and ask God to bless this offering, and then we'll, we'll sing as they, as they receive the offering this morning. Father, once again, thank you. Thank you because you're a God that in our time of need, we're there for us. And now in this time of need, I pray that you would work in our hearts. Help us to be generous today. Console and comfort that family as only you can. Father, I, I pray that they'd be able to um, feel our prayers today, but that they would also see our love and our generosity towards them. And so I pray that you'd bless this offering as it is a token of our love for them. Help, us, help them to be encouraged by it and help them to be blessed by it. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> 